Um, uh, just introducing myself, I'm Anno Harms. I'm part of the Aruba product management organization where I'm responsible for the wireless LAN hardware platforms. And I'm quite excited to uh, share, share a bit more information about what actually goes on in building 6 gigahertz access points. As a, originally a hardware guy, there's only really so much talk about standards and regulatory rules that I can handle. So I think it's time to talk about some, some actual products as we've done in the demo. Uh, I have been instructed, though, to keep this fairly generic, uh, but I guess most of you guys can read between the lines to at least get an idea of what we're working on here at Aruba. Very bright slide. Uh, I will start off with some, uh, some background and objectives, and some of this is repetitive, I do realize. Uh, first and foremost, as you've heard Chuck and others mention many times, 1200 megahertz is an amazing and critical extension of the spectrum and the capacity for wireless LAN. It'll help us grow the networks and the capabilities they support without running into any bottlenecks for the years to come. Um, this is really most critical, of course, for enterprise networks with high densities of both APs and client devices. But even at home, uh, some of us are already starting to run out of available spectrum. Um, as an example, my home network here, uh, on which there are about 50 active devices at any given time, uh, I, I will see at least 100 interfering access point radios in my environment uh, throughout the two support bands today. So most of those may not be strong enough to cause any real problems, but some of them uh, actually, actually do. Uh, so yeah, as soon as I can, I will be upgrading my house to, uh, to support 6 gigahertz, and maybe Pratik can, uh, can give me some of his uh, Intel cards so I can upgrade my laptops as well. So yeah, uh, one of the key things that I really like about six gigahertz is that it is simple to understand and simple to explain specifically to customers. We're gonna triple your wireless capacity. We'll deliver dramatically better performance to more devices. So I I'm not a sales guy, but uh, how hard can it be to sell that, right? I mean, that is, that is a very simple value proposition. And in contrast, uh, this has always been a little bit difficult, at least to me, uh, when talking about multi-user MIMO and OFDMA, even today. Admittedly, they're very great innovations as well, but I'm still struggling when a customer asks me what real world value these bring and if I can please demonstrate that to them right now. Uh, that has been problematic. Six gigahertz is, is much easier, of course. Uh, so yeah, as we often say, with the addition of six gigahertz, we're basically creating an additional you know, multi-link freeway and we keep all the slow traffic out of it. It's like the Autobahn, right? With, uh, with a minimum speed limit, no maximums. Uh, the, the key goal when considering products for 6E and for 6 gigahertz um, is, of course, to deliver full tri-band coverage everywhere that clients may roam. Well, uh, except, of course, for outdoors for now. Um, some customers may find that 6 gigahertz islands uh, in their coverage area may be acceptable, but certainly 5 gigahertz uh, coverage holes are not. And there are many ways to do that, um, but I hope it's clear, and I do still get that question, but I hope it's clear to all that you will need new hardware, new chipsets, new radio, new hardware, and new access points. So yeah, it will be a forklift upgrade of your access point network. Um, also, I just wanna be, be very clear that adding six gigahertz only radio modules or adding six gigahertz only access points to an existing network is clearly not the right way to go. Okay. A couple of specific considerations then that uh, go into the development uh, of at least our 6E products. Um, of, course, of course, our initial focus here is gonna be on uh, products in the LPI or low power indoor class. Uh, those can get certified today. The FCC already certified quite a, quite a few of them. And it gives us full access to the entire six gigahertz band without any complex rules. With enough power for indoor enterprise deployments, and, and I, I always mention that what I think is important also is that the power limit is uniform throughout the band. Uh, in 5 gig, we have lots of variations there and that, that makes it a little bit more tricky for client devices for a, for a uniform behavior. Um, anything over, let's say 18 dBm ERP is plenty for a typical enterprise deployment, at least. At home, you might need more. You might see, want to expand your coverage. But for, for enterprise, that's more than enough. So LPI, to me, is really not uh, causing any real uh, restrictions or limitations. Also, it's more and more rare to see the need for external antennas for indoor deployments. 
However, this may spark some ideas to consider indoor APs with different types of built-in antennas. Uh, obviously, uh, omnidirectional down tilt type antennas are going to be typical, but you may see some that have directional as well, uh, because we cannot use external antennas in 6K. Uh, Tri-radio APs uh, are, of course, the simplest and most straightforward way to deliver uh, 6E and 6 gigahertz coverage. But you may see some dual radio programmable tri-band uh, products out there as an interesting alternative as well. Obviously, that does require that your system level software is smart enough and efficient enough to, to cope with that and still deliver that full tri-band coverage throughout the environment. Uh, as you saw in the demo, uh, it is now realistically possible, and I think even likely, even in a realistic scenario uh, with all the, the the caveats that we mentioned before, but it is not going to be possible to exceed one gigabits on the wired side of the AP. So 6E customers may be able to postpone a decision to upgrade, but I do think they should seriously explore the option to at least go to smart rate um, uh, ports in the future as the use of the six gigahertz bands becomes more commonplace. So I think that's a, that's a key thing for, for folks to consider at least. Okay, and I want to talk about a couple of challenges. There are many more, some I can not talk about, uh, but some of the things that go into uh, the products that we're, that, we're, that we're planning. First of all, yes, uh, linking into what I mentioned before, what we often uh, get asked, uh, do I need to update, do I have to upgrade all my switches when I want to deploy 6E? Well, if you want the highest 6E performance and you want the flagship performance out of your products, Yes, you will need more than 30 watts of power to power those APs. However, a mid-range 6E product should still be okay from PoE Plus. Uh, at least ours will be. And, and we will also give you lots of options to run even that flagship 6E AP in your current network with little or no restrictions. And we'll have some flexibility there. Another question I could ask, do I need smart rate ports? Well, I mentioned on the previous slide, yes, I think it is something you need to consider. Um, you may not need it right away, um, but with 6C becoming more prevalent, uh, you, you're going to need uh, to not create a bottleneck on the wired side. Okay, I expect that uh, many of the products that you'll see on 6E, many of the access points that will come out will have some kind of restrictions on what combination of 5 gigahertz and 6 gigahertz channels can be configured. As you know, the bands are very, very close. That makes filtering a challenge. Um, and many products will have some restrictions there, or they may come with some warnings that the performance will degrade if you configure a high five gig with a low six gigahertz channel. Uh, we will not have that. We will be introducing a unique way to avoid that. And you'll hear more when we can talk more about that, but that's just something that we're looking into. Well, one final point I wanna make. Uh, there are some um, some um, 60 devices out there. Consumer grade uh, consumer APs are out there for the gaming uh, people among us. The question is, do they really have to look like an alien spaceship? Um, I think we can do a lot better than that, uh, and I'll I'll show you a bit of a picture uh, later. And I think your um, your real estate and aesthetics people will uh, will be happy about that. I don't think you want to hang uh, hang these on your ceiling, not in an office environment. That is. Hey, oh no, I kind of like the number of antennas, though. Yes? I had a quick question. <clears throat> so is there any use cases that you guys are seeing where, where 6C may be the only spectrum they're running? So for any particular use cases where they're leaving 5 and 2.4 off and they're, and they're looking to do 6 only, 6C only? I think only. it's a bit early for that. There may, be, uh, there may be areas, there may be customers where that becomes something. I mean, we've been talking about 5 gig only for many, many mm -hmm. years, and we're not there. Right. And we're not building any 5 gig only APs. Um, uh, no plans for that to happen anytime soon. Uh, customers like their old devices for whatever reason, and, and sometimes it makes sense. And IoT could be a good reason for that as well, right? Many IoT devices take advantage of 2.4. And I think what you'll see in the future, your real high-end fast devices will all sit in the six gigahertz band, which will be the majority of your devices. Um, then um, standard stuff, that is not as critical may occupy the five gig and IoT will be primarily on 2.4. Uh, there may be customers who, who are considering specific areas where it's six gig only. 
we certainly have no plans yet, and I, you know, I'm not talking roadmap, but it's pretty obvious uh, to build a six gig only AP. So I'm curious what your views are for enterprises who are looking to upgrade their wireless networks uh, with a look towards the future of 5G public and private networks. Yeah, I'll answer it sort of in two parts. So the first part is on the Wi-Fi side and then secondly on the 5G side. So from a Wi-Fi perspective, I think it's really important that the, you know, the enterprise community and the integrator communities um, know where 6 e falls in terms of the uh, kind of the roadmap for Wi-Fi. And um, it is absolutely the case that the 6E products are basically going to become the second wave of Wi-Fi 6, right? So just like we had two waves with Wi-Fi 5, um, uh, that's going to be the case here. And, and Wi-Fi Alliance is, is um, in the process of standardizing some additional things for, for Wi-Fi 6. But uh, as a practical matter, uh, 6E is the next generation. And I think you're going to see you know, probably complete portfolios from most of the enterprise vendors. And so that means if you're a company that upgraded, uh, maybe you're running Wi-Fi 5 wave one, uh, right? If you're, if you're, uh, uh, you tend to be a much later adopter. If you're running Wi-Fi 5 wave two, right? If you typically are upgrading on that TikTok, uh, the, the talk of the TikTok cycle, then uh, 6E very definitely would be your normal next upgrade. And, and honestly, I think that some customers that maybe are even earlier in the cycle, because of the amount of capacity that's here in those countries that do open up the band um, are going to look pretty seriously at, at maybe bringing forward upgrades that, that might otherwise have, have waited longer. So that's the Wi-Fi side. On the 5G side, you know, I, again, our, our view on this is, has been pretty clear publicly that, you know, we, we see Wi-Fi and, and the cellular networks um, being very collaborative and, and you know, they, they each serve and support the other, right? So the, the research is that over 60% of the traffic that comes off of a mobile device is carried on a Wi-Fi network on average. And that is, uh, that's actually forecast to go up with 5G because the speeds are getting faster and the channels are getting wider on the cellular side as well. Um, and, and so that means, you know, historically that means, you know, when, the, when, the, when more lanes go on the highway, uh, more cars come out, right? And we're gonna see that same thing here um, and that means that Wi-Fi has to get faster uh, as well. And with the AirPass service that we introduced last year, uh, you know, which gives us the ability to automatically connect, uh, uh, you know, uh, for now devices with SIM credentials, right? Eventually, the not, there's a non-SIM component to it as well. But you know, we have the ability today to to if you're a AT and T or uh, you know T-Mobile, one of the major operators. Uh, uh, one of their subscribers and you come into an Aruba footprint, we can connect you automatically onto that network. And that capability will be extended to the six gigahertz band um, as well. So bottom line is they're very complimentary. So um, I'm wondering about the impact on reach. So when I have to upgrade all the hardware, will I need more or less access points after that? Yeah, that's, that, that's a great question. It's another question that, that a lot of customers ask us. In general, we believe that um, the density that you need to deploy six gigahertz is not going to dramatically change the AP density from what you have today. And remember, you still want to give full, give full coverage to five gig and 2.4 gig clients. So you'll, you'll need that same density there. Six gigahertz by the nature of the, of, the, of the frequency is slightly higher attenuation. So you can make a case that, okay, I might need a stronger signal. But the difference is actually fairly small compared to five gig. Uh, that is somewhat offset by, uh, you know, we believe there's going to be much less noise in the six gigahertz band. So from an RF perspective, um, AP densities and AP deployments are not going to dramatically change, if at all, uh, from Wi-Fi 6 to Wi-Fi 6E is our belief. I also had a question. Uh, what do you think which will drive the six gigahertz demand? Will it be the infrastructure side? or the client side with smartphones, for example, like in the five gigahertz, they start. Yeah, maybe, maybe Chuck wants to add on that as well. I, 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 it's going to be the client devices, right? It's going to be the applications and the devices that will drive demand. It is, it is always been that way, even though uh, infrastructure devices may sometimes come out sooner. Uh, you know, that's, there's, there's some differences there. But it is ultimately always the the applications and the, and the mobile devices that will drive demand for the spectrum. I would just add, right? I, I think you know, for for folks that are upgrading on their normal cycles, um, right? There's th th this this generation will become the you know, sort of the, the the baseline generation going forward, right? It it you are future proofing 
the network, right? If you're in a country that is permitted six gigahertz, um, you know, there may be there may be scenarios where buying dual band hardware is appropriate, right? So Anno pointed out, right, for on, on the outdoor front, right, we're not going to have outdoor six gigahertz for some time. But uh, indoors, you know, I, I, I think, uh, you know, it would, you know, people, you know, companies would be very well advised to, to, to get six gigahertz on the ceiling, right, uh, to be prepared for when the clients, you know, the, the clients are going to come very quickly, right? I mean, you wouldn't buy a, a, a two core processor, right, in a, in a, in a machine today, uh, right? You'd, you'd, you'd buy the, the most cores that you could get uh, for, for whatever price point is, uh, is appropriate. Uh, for you, so I think that's going to probably drive it more than uh, than uh, than anything. So finally, uh, a few details and a scrambled image of what could be one of our you know soon to be announced uh, 6E platforms. This is the most that I was allowed to show you <laughs> at this point. Um, under that, all that scrambling, there is an actual AP. Um, I believe that you know, given what I've covered in this presentation before, and what you may or may not know about you know, existing Aruba products and, and how we uh, how we go about, most of these I wouldn't call them specs, but most of these aspects are not really going to surprise you. Um, Tri radio, obviously, uh, that is the, the primary uh, focus here with impressive peak data rates uh, with existing two by two client devices. There was a question about client devices. That AX210 card that Pratik was using, I was joking that I have to get it from him. I can purchase that card uh, somewhere today. So the clients are there, very limited number of them. Uh, there is a, a cell phone on the market as well. The uh, Samsung S21 Ultra supports it also. So clients are coming, uh, but with, and those are all two by two and HE160 capable. So that does give you an opportunity to achieve these high, high data rates. And obviously, when you add multi-user MIMO to that, we'll, we'll be able to push even more data. Uh, smart rate ports, on the AP at least, we feel it's critical. Um, whether or not you will upgrade your infrastructure, again, we would recommend to certainly, certainly consider that, uh, but that's a, that's a decision for our customers to make. But the APs obviously have smart rate ports to avoid any potential wired bottleneck. Uh, we'll have uh, dual ports, um, which are fully equivalent and interchangeable. And that is mostly to support uh, full hitless failover. Uh, that's also a fairly standard feature for some of our APs. And uh, we believe that uh, with all the IoT capabilities built into this, the Aruba AP is going to be the only wireless device that you need on your ceiling uh, for wireless LAN, for IoT, for, for anything you might need there. And then as always, our APs will have a bunch of uh, power optimization and, uh, and other uh, differentiating features built in. So this is really all I can share. Um, uh, you'll hear from us soon, um, but this is uh, all the information I can share with you today.